Everybody that's uh, went to Lakeside this week, if you'll get ready to come on up, we're going to have a moment, let some of them uh, share what God did in their lives. And uh, they don't all have to talk. I'm not going to make you, but I want you all up here and you'll have an opportunity to share what God did this week at camp. Would you guys come? Or not? Come on. Don't take all day. We got to have church today. Come on. I know you're tired, but. So as you share, tell them your name, and then if you want to share something that happened or just say thanks. Um, the church was very generous and to help everybody get to go. And uh, we're grateful for your giving uh, that they were all able to go and they had a nice place to stay and uh, had a lot of fun. So who's going to go first? Hello. What's up, guys? Okay, so, yeah, I just got back from the lakeside. It's pretty cool, pretty awesome, yeah. Um, okay, what do I want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? It was crazy, absolutely insane. I can't even explain it, right? Like, we went there at first. I was like, I don't know about this, right? Like, this whole church camp thing, whatever, right? But uh, this wasn't just, like, some normal church camp. This was crazy, insane, powerful, moving, awesome, it was like everyone just like came together and like everyone's praying for each other. They're all praying together. Everyone's worshiping together. Everyone is like a family. It was insane. It was awesome, right? And, uh, you know, I'm there and I'm just like whatever. It was just, it just everything just kept growing and moving in my life. It was insane, right? And then uh, I talked to this dude, Pastor Neil, and he talked to me for a little while. He's like, hey, you know, you ever given your life to Christ? I was like, no, you know, what's that? I mean, we talked and we talked and we talked. He was like, all right. And I was like, okay. And I made that decision. I did that, right? And that was awesome. Oh, wait, there's more. There's more. Um, and then that night was the night of the prayer concert. And that was the crazy part. That was insane. Like, it was like the Holy Spirit was just boom, right there, like right in front of you. Like, in, it was crazy, right? And just before that, Pastor Neil was all like, hey, you ready to like give your uh, testimony? I'm like, no, what are you talking about? Absolutely, I'm not going to get up on stage and give my testimony, right? But then uh, during that prayer concert, I seen uh, this girl, I don't know if you guys know, Mary Imes is her name, and she's walking around, all these people praying for him, this and that, right? And I see these people, I'm like, you know what? I want to do that, right? I want to go help these people. I want to be that person. I want to do that for other people, right? I don't want this to just be for me. I want this to be for other people, right? And so uh, I go up to her, I'm like, hey, do you care if I like, join you, help you pray? She's like, absolutely, 100%, right? And we're going around, walking around. And then we get in this group, in this big circle of people, right? Everyone's holding hands. We're all praying together. I don't know how long we were there. We were there for a minute. We were there for a while. I just, it was like time was just like going by. I didn't even realize, right? And it was crazy. We're all there. And then it was like God just like started speaking to me. He was like, hey, you got to like do something with this. You got to like not just keep this to yourself. You got to give this to other people, right? And uh, right after that, I got out of the circle. I was like, hey, I went to uh, Miss Renee. Yeah. So that's um, Neil's wife. I was like, hey, where's Neil at? She said, oh, I'll go find him. She went and found Neil. I was like, hey, Neil, like, I want to go give my testimony like right now. He was like, oh, you know, it might be better if you do it tomorrow, right? I'm like, no, this is like right now. Like God's telling me like right now, right? And uh, he's like, all right. So he went up. He talked to the speaker, Courtney. And Courtney's like, yeah, get up here. I went up there, and it was crazy. Like, I don't even remember what I said. Like, afterwards, people were like, hey, you know, can you come over here? Can you come over here? Like, say that again. I'm like, I don't even know what I said. What are you talking about? Like, that wasn't me talking, right? That was God talking. And that was crazy. And then um, after that, I got the opportunity to uh, talk to the junior high kids. And I think that was awesome. Just giving me that opportunity to have that, like, experience and do that was I'm so grateful for that that was amazing awesome and then the next day or two days after that then I got baptized so yeah um, I would definitely say it is just you, you can't even explain it okay there's no amount of money that could could pay for that right like that that church camp could be worth a million dollars I don't even care right like it was so amazing and just moving and powerful it was insane okay highly recommend it to everyone how many of you have seen this kid around church? He just said more words right now than he has the whole time he's been at our church in a year and a half. He said more now than he did all week. I believe it. But I'm telling you, that's what it's all about. Amen. Okay. Bless you, man. She said, Bless you. 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 Bless you.
said no, and I'm not going to play. Um, so you all probably know me. I'm Daniel. I play guitar. Um, but I've been going to camp since I was, like, two years old with my parents. But every single year it gets better and better, and every single year I, I feel God more and more. Um, and uh, this year I had the honor to play with Shane at that prayer concert. And um, the worship is always the best part about Lakeside, in my opinion. I mean, you just feel God moving um, during the fast songs and the slow songs. Um, but it's, it's one thing to see it from down on the ground looking up at the stage, but standing at the stage and watching all the kids go up to the altar and praying and even just watching Isaiah give his life. It was just, it was incredible. Um, and getting to worship the Lord. Music has always been the way I talk to God. So um, I'm really glad I got to do that. And every year I say the same. I, I would recommend Lakeside to anybody. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm Charlie. <clears throat> um, I think I know a lot of you guys. Um, before Lakeside, we were asked to talk about Lakeside, and I had said, it's something you can't explain, and you can't, but I'm glad that these people got to experience what you can't explain. Um, I got to witness Isaiah, like, in the moment, give his life, and I got, I got to witness all of it. Like, I've never, I've never seen that, like, happen. Like, I've had it happen to me, but I've never watched it, and that's awesome. It, awesome. Um, I'm glad people got to experience it. Love Lakeside. Um, I'm Libby. Uh, I actually got to experience Lakeside for the first time this year, and I think it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience that if you don't go to Lakeside, I don't think you're ever going to experience something like it. And I think the whole thing was just moving. I, you felt it. It was opening. I loved it. The experience was amazing. Um, I would recommend it to anybody that got the chance to go because I don't think you'll ever get to experience something like that at all. Um, I think that's all. Uh, my name is Jacob Wireman. This is well my first time going to Lakeside. Uh, Definitely an amazing experience. Definitely recommend it to anyone who wants to go. My favorite thing about it was probably the worship. Makes this place feel a little boring. <laughs> 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 we need to, we need to like get up, get start real worshiping. You can't just. That's not worship. You got to praise God. <laughs> so. <laughs> And um, our speaker, his name was Courtney, and a lot of, I think it was on the second or third day, he was talking about how we need to keep these things when we go back to the real world. But then during our devos that night, I think it might have been Bill who said it, like, this is the real world. And I know we talked about it earlier, but further explaining it, like, at Lakeside, praising God all the time, that's the real world versus coming into this world of sin. But that is the real world that God wants us to be in. That's all I have. Amen. Amen. You good? Can anybody else fill me up right there? We're going to pray for them. Father, thank you for the experience. Lord, it is eternal. And though camp is over, it's not. And I just pray that the investment that was made in every one of these students... God, it will return a thousandfold in your kingdom. I pray the fire will stay lit and keep burning. They'll keep feeding the flame and fanning the flame. And Lord, I just pray a hedge of protection around them and their hearts and their minds and the enemy that will attack and try to kill, steal, and destroy them. Be with them. Guard them. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Thank you. Man, how many think they're full up? I, too, grew up camp experiences. I started when I was seven. You weren't allowed to go till you were eight. My birthday was late, so Mom got me in early and because uh, all my buddies were going. And so then, my, because my birthday was late, I got to go a year extra. And 
finally, the camp director said to me, Brother Culver, he said, you ever going to quit coming to camp? I said, man, I hope not. And uh, then started the, with literally the next summer, he let me come back as an intern. I wasn't old enough to be a counselor. And then from then on for years, kept going to camp. I love camp. I love what it is. I remember one time being a student, and, and the guy says, uh, it's funny how soon the wet blankets start when you have a spiritual experience and you're on fire for God. For me, it was always mom when we'd get home and we'd open up my dirty clothes bag, which is basically, you know, the biggest 55-gallon trash bag she could find. And I've been sweating all week and been in the creek all week paddling a canoe and racing and doing all those competitive things and, and not smart enough in junior high to know you're supposed to hang those up, let them dry. You just stick them in there. Five days later, 100 degrees, mildewed clothes. You've never smelled anything like it. And mom would go, boy, I'm going to beat your butt. I'm like, but mom, but God moved. and Well, you should learn how to hang up your clothes. And I'm like, she's not getting it, you know. And young people, I challenge you, the people here won't necessarily get it. Because they didn't have the experience. But we can. Amen. This morning, I want to talk about a subject. And I was sitting over there last Sunday morning, getting ready to speak to you. And God started giving me stuff that I was to share today. And I don't usually get a sermon during service the week before like that, but I literally started thinking about this thought running on empty. Running on empty. Who's ever run out of gas? Who's ever run out of gas because your wife didn't get to the gas station and you had to go help her out? A couple of you. Who ever ran out of gas pre-cell phone days? That was when it was fun. No triple A. You had to walk to the nearest house, hope it wasn't some psychopath. And they're looking at you because you look like a psychopath. I ran out of gas, sir. Could I borrow your phone? And they're looking you up and down like, Do I trust him to come in? And you prayed they had one of them really long cords so you didn't have to go in, <laughs> you know. But sometimes life's like that. How many like to go and you pour your favorite cereal in a bowl, you open the fridge to find out your kids drank all the milk? Don't you just love putting cereal back in the box? Isn't it great? And you're, yeah. Running out of stuff is not fun. How about losing your Wi-Fi connection? Let's talk about real life. Things that really make you mad. Or you're on the phone and you're talking and it's serious and all of a sudden you hit a dead spot. I think I lost you. Hello? Hello? But there's nothing worse than running on empty with God. Nothing worse. One of the biggest mistakes we make as Christians is not taking time out to refill our spirit. There's not a mom in the house that takes enough time out to refill themselves. You're always giving out. I'm not saying it's any less for dads. But moms, I'm telling you. Your kid needs you filled up. Because how many of you know that same kid can drain you? <laughs> They're sucking the life out of you. All the more reason you have to fill up. What are we doing as Christians to make sure we're full so we have something to get out? Now, I, I, I'm not using this scripture. I'm not going to read it. But I, I was thinking after I had all my notes done, it, it's kind of like the, uh, the, the ten guys that had their, their lamps. And uh, five were wise and five were foolish. Five had enough lamp oil for themselves, right? And the other guys didn't have any, so they were considered foolish. But I, I heard a message when I was a kid that said, really, all ten of them were foolish. Because as a Christian, you don't just need enough oil for yourself. You need some oil for your other guy. So they could have went and experienced Jesus also. And I think sometimes we only think about ourselves. And if I got enough just to get through the day, I'm good. Folks, we need enough not only for ourselves, we, because there's people out there that need Jesus from us. 
And they're going to take away from your spirit. And if you're always giving and you never fill up, you'll run out. Everybody say run out. When you run out, you're no good to Jesus. This is going to be really simple. It's not going to be very long, I promise. Because it's just a simple point that God just revealed to me. And, and I know he was preaching to me. Because we're all guilty. We, we give and we give and we pour and we pour and we help and we help and we bless and we do all those things. And every once in a while, you, I'm exhausted. i got nothing left. And guess when the enemy shows up? When you got nothing left and you're exhausted. That's why your pastor tells you all the time, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is sleep. I know none of you have this problem, but every once in a while, it seems at night, we, we might bicker a little bit at our house. And she might pick on me for something that she reminds me late at night that I forgot to do that day. And I might pick a little back. And in that moment, I try to remind myself, Randy, just go to bed and shut up. <laughs> do what you tell other people to do. Don't, don't prolong this. Folks, it's, sometimes it's that simple. Take a nap. Now, some of you are going to go home and say, honey, you heard what the preacher said. <laughs> and you'll turn on NASCAR and the roar of that motor in 10 minutes, you're out. I know. Been there, done that. But you know what? Ladies, sometimes... <laughs> Most spiritual thing you can do is let him. <laughs> we can't keep pouring and pouring because eventually we'll run out. You must refill. And that's what these kids experienced at camp. They got full up and they're full to overflowing. Isaiah just preaching up here, man. Who would have seen that coming? Listen. They're full of the Spirit of God. Don't be their wet blanket. <laughs> Feed it. Encourage it. And if they come up in a little bit and they're singing and they're moving a little more and, and not being so boring, Jake. <laughs> lead the way, Jake. You asked for it, Jake. Do it. But the point is, when they do it, don't sit back. Don't watch the show. Come. And fill up yourself. Because that's what we need. If we're full of God, when life squeezes us, God will come out. If we're emptied of everything and we have nothing less, that's the best place to be. Because that's where Jesus wants to start. When you get to the end of yourself, he wants to be right there and fill you back up with nothing but Jesus. Problem is, some of us aren't there yet. Some of us are so full of ourselves, there's no room for Jesus. No, it's not this church. It's other people at other churches. I didn't really mean that. Only you know the truth. What's in here? Second Kings tells a story. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what, tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside, shut the door behind you and your son's. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him, shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there's not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil, pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left. Now, folks, as a kid, hearing that story, that story always intrigued me. That's pretty cool. Let's say this was her little jar of oil. And you think of the biggest containers you can think of, like big flower pots, like the kind they have at the mall that are this tall, this big around, and taking this and filling it up. That's what they did. It's in there. 
every vessel they could find and borrow from this. And they just kept pouring. Pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, it's a kid. I was like, wow. I don't know how our pastor did it, but he had a big old container and he poured out of a pitcher. I don't know if there's a water hose in it. I don't know if it filled it up first and we didn't see it. I don't know what he did, but he filled it up to overflowing. I was like, whoa. But there was a trick because he, he's not God, nor am I, and I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> but the point was, when you come to God empty, he will fill you up. And as long as you keep bringing your empty vessel to him, He won't run out. We run out. We tap out. We give. We quit. But as long as we have a vessel that he can pour into, he will fill us full to overflowing. But the day you stop getting vessels, you stop being the vessel, the day you stop bringing yourself, he will stop pouring into you. See, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Who changes? We do. Those young people went to camp. They were isolated, separated, totally in a a state of, of being influenced by the Holy Spirit. They separated themselves from the real world. They went and made place for Jesus, and what did he do? He filled them up. What are you doing? To make yourself available for God to fill you up. Some of you will say things like, well, I'm here, aren't I? Yeah, but you're boring, according to Jake. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) You really helped me out today. (laughs) I knew somebody would. Listen, why, why, why do we have to go to a retreat to get filled up? What are you doing on a daily basis? To fill your vessel. Why does your pastor encourage you as often as I possibly can? Be in God's word every day. Because nothing will fill your vessel like the word of God. Experience is great. We all need experience. But thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. It doesn't say thy experience I have had at camp so I won't sin. No. The word of God is the only way you can fight the devil. You need experience, but you need the word. You've got to have the word. I talk about personal worship. I might, I might dance before the Lord in personal worship that I'd never dance maybe in front of other people. But me and God, we have our moments. I have personal worship. There's times I just start singing and start bawling. My heart is just moved by the Holy Spirit. I don't even sing anymore. I just cry out to God. I can't explain that. I'm different. Some other people, they just sing and worship and they just have the greatest experience. Cool, great. Some is just sitting and meditating and and, and, and don't let... Don't let new age steal meditation from the church. The Bible is very clear. We need to meditate. And sometimes it's just trying to shut off the noise. And just concentrate and say, hey, God, I'd like to hear something. And then wait and try to listen. And I believe God will speak to us if we'll listen. But most of us, all we do is talk to him and at him and tell him our prayer list. But we never listen to what he's trying to tell us. I think sometimes he wants to interrupt our prayer list and say, hey, shut up. Listen to me. Jesus wouldn't do that. We do it to our kids and we love them. Stop talking. Never had to say that to Bryden, I don't think. Auburn, on the other hand. Actually, it was probably the opposite. He never quit asking questions. I don't know. I'm just a dad. Listen to me. What's God trying to tell us today? Folks, I'm going to tell you right now. If we run on empty, we will crash and burn. You have to fill your vessel. 
Some of you are starving spiritually. Hangry Christians are not fun to be around. They're critical. They're not very objective. They're judgmental. They gripe. They murmur. They complain. And they gossip. And they're killing the church. But when you're empty of God and you're void of his spirit, your stinky self comes out. And we all got one. There's a flesh in every one of us. And when we don't feed our spirit, our flesh comes out and it ain't nice. Somebody say amen. amen. Hangry Christians are not fun to be around. What you got today, preacher? I'm starving to death. But there's nothing you're going to give me that's going to help me today. Some of you just uncrossed your arms because you think I'm talking about you. <laughs> and folks, I, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad that we aren't doing enough to encourage each other in our walk with Jesus. We got to feed each other's spirit. It's, it's sad so many times, and we've all done it. Like, I, I could notice if Brian's off a little bit, I can usually tell. Why? Because he's pretty constant. He's goofy, for one. Would you agree? Yeah. And, 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 and he's kind of fun. He's pretty talkative and open and caring. Always gives me a hug. Kind of gives me a death grip sometimes. If he came in and he wasn't his normal self, I would probably notice, right? Because i got a rapport with my brother. But how many times when we see somebody off, instead of going up and saying, hey, and hug him first, maybe feel the spirit a little bit. Hey, man, what's going on? How you doing? Well, now that you mention it, it's been kind of a tough week. And John kind of prayed that. Kids had awesome camp. Not everybody got to go to camp this week. Some of us went to a different camp, the camp of hard knocks, life. Maybe you had some tough experiences this week. That's why we need to be filled up. Like those guys that were going to see Jesus, they had oil, but they only had enough for themselves. Folks, sometimes we need enough oil. We can pour it in somebody else. I want to be full to overflowing. I don't want to be empty. I don't like being the guy in need. I like helping people. I struggle when I need help. I have a hard time asking for help. <laughs> Some of you wives are looking at your husband. I just seen you. You went. Some of you wishing your husband was sitting there. She could do that to him. You know, some women ain't much better at it. They're always willing to help somebody else, but they ain't going to about to ask nobody else for help. Mm. Well, that's good preaching. I don't care if you like it or not. See, sometimes your pastor is so practical, they don't even seem spiritual. I'm giving you one of the most spiritual messages. Some of you are running on empty and you need to fill up. It's that simple. You can't keep going on the same old tank. You will run out. When's your last camp experience? We all need one. When's the last time you had an experience like these kids just described? That's too long for most of us. You can't keep running on an old experience. We all need new ones, fresh ones, and maybe daily ones anymore. Remember, we're not the small jar of olive oil that doesn't run out. We can't run endlessly. That's Jesus. He's the supplier. We are the containers that get refilled, poured out and refilled, poured out and refilled. Where are you at in that? Do you need refilled today? Have you been pouring out and you're just out of gas? 
Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Are you hungry for more of God or just hangry? Don't stay hangry. Nobody wants to be around hangry Christians. What's missing in your life is more than just the absence of God. It's the absence of prioritizing God. And how many of you know we fill up differently? Some guys need to go to the woods to fill up. Some ladies need to go on a retreat to fill up. Some guys fill up on a golf course or fishing. Or riding a side-by-side crazy through the woods. I wouldn't know anything about that. Some people fill up around an altar. Some fill up at their prayer spot at home. And I don't try to categorize the way everybody has to fill up. Not everybody, has, not everybody gets to go to camp. But everybody needs that experience. I'm asking you to find a place and put yourself out there and say, God, I need a fresh experience today. I'm empty. I need refilled. Can it be at the bridge on a Sunday morning? Yes. And it should be. But some Sundays mornings, you're going to find yourself like Isaiah. This is cool, but I want to do what she's doing. I don't want to just get filled up. I want to go pray for my brother to get filled up. Pray for my sister to get filled up. And some days, folks, you'll sit in a place where you can't help anybody else. You just just need help. And that's the beauty of being a Christian. We all go through it. Some days I got something to give Kendall. Some days I don't. I need Kendall to give something to me. And what I love about the church, it's not an age thing either. It's not a how long you've known Jesus thing either. Isaiah's been a Christian for five days, and he just motivated everyone in the room. It's how full we are that makes a difference for others. Do you have something to give away to make a difference in others? If not, fill up. You can't run on empty. We're not made for that. Some people like camping. Others of you like a five-star hotel to get away and relax. Whatever it is, do something. Stop the presses and make sure you're taking time for yourself to take care of you because if we run out of you, you can't take care of anybody else. It's imperative. And I'm not always the best example of it. Because I'd rather give than receive. But if I don't receive, I'll have nothing to give. We need to refuel. Shane, you get a song? What are you doing to fill up with more of God? For our very godless world. How do you cope when you lack? None of us have what it takes to live in this crazy world today. We all need more of God to be able to make it. The other thing is we were never meant to go alone. There are no lone rangers in Christianity. We do not have to be Mr. and Mrs. Tough Guy. We were made for family. We were made for community. We cannot do it by ourselves. Well, I can't talk to people. I, I can't trust people. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Stop. I the guy the other day and he was telling me, he said, I'm just not that social. I said, no, you're just scared of being social. I don't like big crowds. I don't like this. I don't like that. 
Listen, we were made for it. Don't live in isolation. And when you need help, don't be afraid to say, I could use some filling up today. So they're going to sing, and we're going to try not to have boring worship to end this service. The front is open. You can come up here. You won't offend anybody, will they? You've seen it all week. It, it'll probably be very tame compared to what you've seen all week. It's open. But if you're running on empty today, I encourage you before you leave, find a place with God. Say, God, fill me up. There's an old song we used to sing back in the day, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Come and fill. Cleansing of my soul. I can't remember the exact words. It's been too long since I sang it. I used to sing that sometimes in prayer because it was where I was at. Maybe you need to be saying, God, fill my cup. I lift it up. Come and quench this longing of my soul. That was what it said. And not just fill it up, but God, I want to be full to overflowing. I want it to splash off on other people like these young people did today. Let's stand. One of the reasons I really like that song because it puts our focus on the only person that will never fail us. It doesn't say I put my trust in church camp. I didn't put my trust in the praise team or Shane or the pastor or Pastor Mark. I trust in God. Because people will fail you. We let each other down. We don't mean to, but we do. But our trust has to be in God. He will never fail you. He may not always do exactly what you want, the way you want, how you want, when you want, but He'll never fail you. That's a lot. He's got you, folks. But we got to stay full of Him, empty of ourselves. And if you're at the end of yourself, you're in a perfect place for a great experience with God. Because he likes us when we're empty. He can use that. Because he can fill us up with the good stuff. How many of you want to be filled with the good stuff of God today? Amen. Because life is going to squeeze you. <laughs> You're going to meet with a family that needs some extra. So you got to stay full. So you got the extra to give. You're going to have a student come to your class one day and says, Hey, Mr. Pritchard. Need some help. You got the good stuff. You got something to give them. That's what I'm talking about. And we're all facing situations and people where we need, they need our good stuff. And it's God. I trust in Him. Father, I pray that as we leave this place, we will work on being full of the good stuff of the Holy Spirit. Lord, it's free for all of us. It's a gift given as a result of Jesus coming and dying on a cross, giving his life and being resurrected. And in his absence, you sent the Holy Spirit to fill us with the good stuff. Lord, that we would have something to give to others in need, not just to fill us for ourselves, but as Isaiah so eloquently articulated, it wasn't just about going to camp and, and getting something for himself, but he wants to start helping others get it also. God, let us be those people in our world today. And God, help our students to understand everything they did and participated in at camp can happen in their everyday life. And let the rest of us follow suit. And Lord, as we go into this world that needs us to be full today, that we have something to give, something to share, to encourage, let us be those people. And Lord, for the one that's struggling, they're here today, but they know they're empty. They need more. Fill them, God. Fill them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.